When Salvador Allende became Chile's first Marxist president in 1970, it appeared to be a true watershed in Chilean history. But his radical policies polarized the nation. In three years, Chile was tearing itself apart. The internal disarray was resolved in September 1973, when the armed forces with US support combined to overthrow the government. President Allende was killed in an attack on the presidential palace. What followed was unprecedented in Chilean history. A democratic system of government which had been in place for so long was replaced by a military regime that set about undoing the patterns of the past. Thousands of Allende's supporters were killed or arrested. Political activity was suspended. Thousands more were sent into exile. No regime in Chilean history has been more authoritative or more brutal in its repression of dissent than that of General Augusto Pinochet. His policy and that of his colleagues was to root out Marxists and to allow only a slow return to a competitive party system. After Pinochet took over, an estimated one million Chileans fled the country, making new homes around the globe. It was to be at least 15 years before they returned. In 1988, with Pinochet on the way out, many felt it safe to come home. One of the first was Hortensia Buzzi, Salvador Allende's widow. She returned a heroine, saying she came without hate or resentment. That was a sentiment expressed by those who came after her. Exiled opposition leader Velodia Tatelboim followed suit, stepping back on Chilean soil after 70 years. Suddenly, with the new president, Patricio Elwin, in place, the flood started. It's a time of freedom. It's a time of liberty. When you can express what you think about, we are very happy to be here. It's uh, the first time since uh, 1973 that we are here in Chile. Luis Fuentes came home for Christmas last year after 15 years in exile. Very different. After the coup, he made a new life for himself in England, marrying a British woman. Unlike many exiles, Luis has found the transition back into Chilean life relatively smooth. He says he never considered his stay in England permanent. Being a student there and I'm being and living there all the time. Well, I will say after a couple of two or three years, so I somehow become kind of interesting. So it's chicken. I will say that I, I never lose my way. My old concern all the time was that uh, I wanted to come back to Chile as soon as I can. Things weren't so cut and dried for Lewis' wife, Paula. Even though she had worked with Latin Americans in England and had become familiar with their culture, there were still hurdles to overcome. Christmas is, is a time that we miss people and you're, you're accustomed to things that, that you used to do, but that you've always had done since you've been very little. I mean, this is, a, this is a very easy country to live in in terms of being friendly as the people. You know. Paula has become committed to her life in Chile. Both she and Lewis are keen to share their experiences and pressure the government into easing a comeback that for many is quite difficult. Well, it's an awful thing of uh, being constantly confronted by a policy that you can do very little about in the short term. And that's, that's the sort of general level of thing that's always made me uncomfortable, I think, from, from talking to other Europeans who live here, the same. Chile of the late 60s and early 70s is the nostalgic and distant image many exiles bring back with them. The reality of the 90s, though, is far from the relatively prosperous Santiago streets they remembered. A 
Amanda Hara's folk singer father Victor was murdered by Pinochet's forces. She left Chile when she was nine to live in England. She came back 16 years later and was totally alienated. Like many children who had been born or raised outside Chile, she had language and assimilation problems, but coming home was something she had to do. I realized that this country uh, was part of me and I was part of it as well. Uh, it's something very, very uh, peculiar, I think, about Chileans. Yeah? And a lot of Latin American people that I've known in my life um, say, you know, why is it that Chileans always have to go back? Yeah? And they always do. Amanda helped set up one of a dozen agencies that deal with the exiles' housing, medical and general survival problems, but Congress has been slow in passing laws that would ease the return. Finding a place in their homeland is preventing many Chileans and their new families from coming back. While the impact of the returnees does have a positive aspect, a rich contribution to Chilean society, the downside is ever-present. When you're exiled, you have to make a home in a country you don't know, the language you don't know. Everything is unknown to you. When you come back, you think you know. You think you know the language, you think you know the country, but, you know, you're in for very big surprises. From Chile, thank you. That's the theme of an exhibition in Santiago marking the contribution of other nations in easing the plight of the exiles. 191 countries became home over the years to the exiles, 500 families returned last year, 20,000 exiles are expected this year. Ten months into the democratic administration of Patricio L. Wynn, those who fled a regime that was condemned for its human rights abuses are confident that the nightmare of the last decade and a half is over. Have a, have a better attitude, as it were. You know, they have a clear idea of what exile really is about. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a holiday.